So if your primary purpose is over here on the profit and loss report, then sometimes you might be might think that the class tracking would be better even if you're trying to break out by location if one of your attempts is to break out payroll by employee assigned to a particular location because because the class tracking allows you to do that if your location tracking is is partially in order for you to have different names and whatnot that are going to be given to external reports to clients then that would be another reason why you might use the location tracking over the class tracking and of course you might use the two in conjunction uh, with each other as well let's go ahead and just record this i put a customer i'm going to put it on three one so labor i just put it into to labor and let's save and close it and i'm going to also change this second one to be a sub account i'm going to edit this it needs to be a sub of california one or california <laughs> All right, so then if I go over to my profit and loss report and run it, and let's bring this out just to March now, 033123, and run it there. So, and now I'm gonna break this out, not by class, but by the location. I had to refresh the, the page because I turned on location tracking, but there it is, location tracking, run it. So there it is. So now I've got California, and then I've got the subcategory because I put it in a subcategory. So note the difference of using a sub location. It's going to kind of try to house it under California. It's going to make the number of columns a lot longer because you're going to have California, the sub, and then uh, the total as opposed to using class tracking and location tracking, in which case you'll have a whole nother set of columns up top for class tracking and then uh, the location tracking. So other than that, it works in a similar way as, as uh, some of the other tools we took a look at. So if I say, let's make an expense item up top and say we're going to make an expense item. And we're going to say this is going to be for vendor two. And then I'll just say, let's just change. I'll use these items down below and do the same kind of thing. But let's say this for 1,400. And let's say this is for 600 and uh and so notice we could make it billable and pull it over to to a customer but the location tracking isn't tied to a particular customer so i'll just record that and let's say save it and close it did i assign it to a location i didn't even assign it to a location did i let's go back on over here and run it notice i did that on purpose because then if you don't assign it to a location it goes like the class tracking into not specified and like with the class tracking you would like to have everything specified to a location usually and then the not specified area will tell you if you messed up you didn't assign something to a location then i can drill back down on it and assign it to a location i can go back into it and then when I assign to a location, I have to assign the entire transaction up top. Let's this time go to, to the second location uh, here and I'll say save and close. And then if I go back on up top and say back to my report and run it just to make sure it's running. So now we've got this amount was assigned to the first location. These are assigned to the second location, total for the sub locations and then uh, the total on the right hand side and let's go back on over and then do another one i'm going to say this time i'm going to say it's an expense and let's say this is going to be for vendor one we'll say categories of utilities i'm not going to put any classes in it it's just going to be for let's say this time location nevada so it's on three one okay so there's going to be our expenses decrease in the checking account the other side going to utilities let's save it and close it and then if i go to my balance sheet by the way and break that out uh, by locations i got to refresh the screen let me refresh it and so there we have it so now i can hit the locations and run it so now we've got our locations broken out here now notice that quickbooks might be a little bit better on the balance sheet to break out location by location because we're assigning the location to the entire transaction. 
but still you can't really count on the balance sheet to be perfectly lined up because these tools are generally focused more on uh, the income statement. So you'll start to think, well, things aren't in balance per location kind of, kind of thing. But if you assign one location to the entire transaction, it's more likely to be able to, to work on the balance sheet than when you start assigning line by line different classes, for example. If I go back on over here, so there we have it. Now we've got our Nevada one. Now notice the problem with location tracking is that if I put like an expense form and I'm going to go vendor one, if I wanted to assign these two utilities to two different locations, California and Nevada, for whatever reason, which oftentimes you, you do because you might be assigning certain expenses that you're paying for both locations to, to each one using some percentage method or something. You can't do that with the locations because the locations are up here assigned to the full transaction as opposed to the classes where you can do that. So that's going to be one of the limitations on the location tracking. It makes it a little bit easier. But if if you don't have to assign per, per line item, but if you need to assign per line item, then of course that becomes a problem because you can't do that. So that's one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're thinking what are you using location tracking for i'm going to leave it without uh, saving that then there's the question of do you want to use like if i had multiple locations and then i had departments how do i want to do that do i i could use either location tracking or classes and then use these sub categories in order to account for the department. So I might have California and then a subcategory of admin, a subcategory of, of sales, which gives me this nice breakout of the full amount for the California location, subcategory, subcategory, and then the total. But you also come up with a, with a long kind of report and you're not easily able to, to categorize by like admin over the entire company, right? I can't, I, I can't get a column as easily for admin for California and uh, Nevada, right? And your, your other option would be to run these two things together. Say I'm going to use the location tracking for the two states. And then maybe I use, uh, maybe I use uh, class tracking for locations within those states or for departments within uh, within the location so that I can run a whole nother set of columns up top uh, and, and, and then I can filter. So for example, if I, if I enter my transactions here and I, I also use class tracking, which we turned on and say we want expenses and I'm going to, I'm going to allocate the expenses to vendor one. And this time let's say it's supplies supplies, expense, boom. And let's say that is uh, one, one, two, four class. This time I'll say class. I have business and professional. I'll keep that B and then supplies. That's not supplies, supplies here. And let's say that's for uh, 600 and that's for P. And this is happening. Okay, so now I'm breaking it out by class and it's assigned to the uh, Nevada location. Now those classes, you might say it's, it's within Nevada and it's basically for admin maybe in Nevada and then, and then sales in Nevada. Let's save and save a new and let's do one more. 